Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and today we have with us Maureen St. Germain, the author of the book called Waking Up in 5D. So I think everybody's going to want to know, what is 5D? 5D is the zone that the traditions tell us is heaven, is the expression of you and I, fully plugged into our divine self, but like the ascension, but not having to die to get there. Very cool. <laughs> so what do we have to do to get there? Well, it turns out people are waking up in 5D all the time. And the way you know you're in 5D is when you're in that blissful state, like when you first fall in love and nobody can upset you. Um, you create uh, an environment around you. And even when people are upset and you're in a good mood, nobody can touch you. Um, we notice it when uh, things happen that are unexplainable in 3D. And I'll get into some of those examples in a minute. Okay. Wow. Well, it sounds fascinating. It sounds, I think I might even know what you're talking about. I think you will too, because of the way you're reacting. I can tell <laughs> your energy is like, oh yeah, I know that, that space. So one of the examples I'll give you right away. And this, everybody I tell this to says, oh, that happens to me all the time. They're sitting in traffic. Maybe you're the third car back at a traffic light. And the light changes and nobody else moves. And you're looking around and thinking, huh, how come nobody's moving? And then they move. Yeah. That's, you're in 5D at that point. Because in 5D, you're actually ahead in time a few seconds. Oh. And the 3D people haven't actually seen the light change yet. Okay. So in 5D, you can actually participate in 3D. But in 3D, they don't get 5D. But oh. you can lift someone's vibration up. One of the other things I do is I tell people, say a simple prayer. Uh, I am asking for a day of heaven on earth for me and everyone I come in contact with. And what happens is you bring that vibration of uh, equality, acceptance, compassion to every interaction with the people you talk to. So, you know, I was sitting down at a restaurant bar at the airport and I was trying to order my food on this iPad and they were going to give me a discount if I gave them my um, uh, uh, airline, uh, you know, number. And I'm struggling with all this, you know, uh, stuff. And two or three people came over and then a couple more people came over and everybody was helping me try to figure out why the app wouldn't take my number. Oh, no. Okay, so finally, uh, the order gets placed, and um, I'm kind of by myself, and I turn and say hello to the lady next to me, and she says, you know, nobody talked to me when I sat down, and I said, really? And she said, yeah, nobody uh, helped me with my order, and I looked at her and I said, wow, that's so amazing. That My experience was a lot different than that, and she said, I know. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> And I said, do you want to know my secret? And she said, yes, I do. And so I said, well, I just ask for a day of heaven on earth for me and everyone I meet. And so when people connect with me, they move right up into 5D because I'm holding space for them. Isn't that amazing? Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Did, so she, have, think, did she understand or did she think you were not? <laughs> I, well, because she saw the... Uh, uh, outcome first uh-huh you know it kind of even if she did think i was in that it probably challenged her belief system and you know the thing is when people encounter these things they have a choice and the choice is either to give it a shot and yeah. see if it works for them or not but when when you're when you're flying and you know let's face it you know flying is an interesting experience and a lot of people get stressed out over it you're going to try anything you can to take care of yourself in a good way so i imagine she did try it <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah. yeah okay so how big is it look like a thick book could you hold the book up oh sure yeah so here's the cover yes it's not very thick book. well okay <laughs> it's, it's a good size book let's see it's uh 250 pages okay the, the thing that people tell me is that it's very readable. You know, a lot of times people write books about esoteric subjects and you, you can't make sense out of it. And, and you read it and then you think, what did I just read? <laughs> and you go back and read it again, right? Right. But in this book, it, it, 
it's not like that. It's very user friendly and it's very common language. So, um, and I tell stories. I tell lots and lots of stories. Oh, I love stories. And I believe that stories help people get the message so much faster. Yes. And I'll give you another example. Um, years ago, before I had a cell phone, you know, this goes back to the 90s, I was um, on the MARTA, which is the subway system in Atlanta. And uh, my host had asked me to take the train because she was running late in a business meeting and she would have been like two hours later picking me up if I didn't do that. So I said, no problem, you know. And she said to me, just call me when you get on the train and I'll know when to pick you up. Now, I had not uh, ridden on this system before, but I assumed erroneously that they would have phones on the platforms like they used to have in the New York subways that I rode all the time. Right. Well, there were no phones there. And so I got on the first train that was going in the way I wanted to go. And two women got on my car. And then a very tall, you know, man, 250 pounds easy, gets on and the two women get off. And I don't, I don't get any uh, uh, sensation of any uh, issue. And then um, the train moves. And the man comes over to me and says, give me some money. And I said, no, I'm not going to give you any money. And he said, just give me some money. And I, I looked at him and I said, you know, um, I mean no disrespect. But are you asking me anything that you have already asked me before? The answer is still the same. I'm having trouble hearing you. Are you, uh, you know, I just got off a plane here. And he wasn't expecting me to talk to him in a respectful way. He was <laughs> expecting me to, he was expecting me to be intimidated. And instead I'm talking to him like he's a real person because that's 5D, right? Right. And, and then he says, just give me some money. And I think to myself, you know, if he had a cell phone, I'd be happy to give him some money and pay him for using his cell phone. So I said, well, do you have a cell phone? No, I don't have a cell phone. Just give me some money. And I said, I'm not doing that. Sorry. And then of course we came to the next stop. And at the next stop, <clears throat> he gets off and I look at him and I said, you know, you might try sales. You're pretty persistent. Now I've been in plenty of situations where I've been told by guidance, you know, get up and move or go do something. And obviously these two women did not want to be in the car with this man. Maybe they'd seen him intimidate somebody before. Who knows? I don't know the answer. Um, I don't think he would have done it if there were more people in the car. Right. <laughs> maybe, maybe they were part of his entourage. Who knows, you know? But um, I remember thinking, he picked the wrong mama to, to, <laughs> to, to try and get money from, you know, because it wasn't where I was at. So that's <laughs> that's it is funny. And I honestly, I honestly saw him as a real person. And, you know, can you imagine having somebody who's, I'll, I'll use the word, trying to uh, hustle you for money? And you looking them in the eye and say, I mean no disrespect, but. Yeah. <laughs> but this isn't going to work, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool because it's a little disrespectful to be telling someone, give me some money. And here I am being respectful to him. Again, it's that 5D energy that is so engaging. And, and that was, you know, that was a good 15 years ago. So what happens is each of us are sliding into that zone periodically and interacting with people you know typically let's say you're buying a car you want to get the best deal you can and feel like you uh you know got a better deal than maybe the guy who was trying to sell the car to you would give you that's human nature or at least we think it's human nature but it's really how we have been trained to think is human mm -hmm. nature in truth and 5D, what we want is a deal that makes them happy and makes me happy. Yes. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is. That is. Yeah. So part of what I wrote in the book has to do with noticing your language and that you could be proactive by consciously choosing to eliminate certain words from your vocabulary. For example, everybody uses the word have to, right? I have to go get the kids at school. I have to uh, um, meet my boss. I have to uh, go to dinner, you know. And instead, we could say something else like, um, I'm going to pick up my kids now. I like being on time. Or 
um, my husband taking me to dinner, whatever it is, instead of I have to. Yeah. Because the have to subconsciously says that there's a big brother or the man that's telling us that life is being controlled by some outside force and we're plugging into it. And the same is true with other mass consciousness things that we do as a group. For example, think about how many people watch football games or, or you know, like the big football games mm -hmm. or um, people watching the news. Everybody has to have a cup of coffee in the morning. And so one of the things I tell people is shake that up. You don't have to watch every football game. You don't have to watch the Super Bowl. If you're interested in the commercials, go watch those ahead of time or watch <laughs> them afterwards, you know, but don't join the club at the exact same time everyone else says, because mass consciousness is literally being directed by an outside energy that is bigger than us. And like, we're being pulled into it, you know? So uh, like a, you know, a big river. Um, another thing I tell people is instead of saying, well, that's the right way. You can say, that's what works for me. And you know, when someone says, well, do you want this or do you want that? You can say, well, this is a match for me. And that way you're not judging it as good or bad or right or wrong. And that's very right cool. for you or wrong for you. It's, yeah, it's, I like that. Yeah, exactly. So you just consciously change some of your words and you literally unhook from mass consciousness. And the minute you unhook from mass consciousness, you have the ability then to tap into the higher consciousness and people are doing it all the time. Another thing that happens is people lose things. And have you ever lost something, you know, whether it's your, your little device or, you know, something else. And you think, I just put it down. How could it be moved? How could it disappear? Well, if you're in 5D when you put it down and then you're anxious and looking for it in a stressed way, you're back in 3D and you can't see it. So in 5D, you can participate in 3D. In 3D, you don't see up to 5D. So all you have to do is calm down unhook from it. And that's what happens, right? We, we forget about it. We stop worrying about it. And then we open that drawer and there it is. We think it wasn't there before. I know that happens to me all the time. I had decided that it slips out of this dimension. <laughs> well, I did too. I did too. And I thought to myself, you know, we're sending stuff to other dimensions. Kind of like when we sent monkeys into space, you know, it's just kind of <laughs> trial and error right yeah and then i realized then one day instead of asking where did my stuff go because i would be told it's in another dimension just like you got right yeah and instead of asking where did my stuff go i asked the question what what is going on and i was told maureen you were in a higher dimension when you put it down and i thought oh, oh my god if i'm doing it so are you I'm and isn't that cool that. Isn't that cool? It means that there's proof positive. You're already multidimensional and you didn't even know it. And that's the best part of this book is these ahas. You know, when you get goosebumps or, you know, ghost flesh and, and that's your body saying, yes, that's happening. That's real. You're not making it up. And to have that kind of resonance. So that's another tool. Instead of saying, you know, there's like five interview questions, who, what, when, where, why, how, and when, who, what, what six questions, but there's only one that doesn't seek to solve a problem. When you say, who ate the cookies? You want to go find that kid and yell at him for not sharing. When were the cookies eaten? Well, if they ate them at six o'clock, they're probably not going to eat dinner. Stuff like that. But when you ask the what question, it's completely open-ended. And again, I discovered this by accident because one day I was in my car, my son was driving and it started making a strange noise. And I, I said out loud, what is going on with the car? And immediately out of my mouth came the words of what was wrong with the car. And it was way above my level of I'm understanding. understanding. Right, right, right. And I just burst out laughing because I thought that's the funniest thing I've ever heard from my mouth. And then in meditation, I asked, how did I know that? And the answer was you ask the what question because what is always open-ended. And when you say what is going on or I wonder what is going on, what happens is you're telling the universe, give me the full story. Wow. Don't hold that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Quite amazing. And I've got lots of examples of people's experiences, which is so powerful because then you know, yeah, this is real. Other people are having it happen to them and it's happening to me. And then I also give people tools for 
um, advanced meditation and their pineal activation and things like that that will help access those higher dimensions. And the bottom line is, you know, some of us may be interested in advancing ourselves spiritually, but some of us may be just interested in, you know, let's have a smoother life already. You know, things are pretty funky sometimes. So that vibration is also like that. You know, it's like your car's going to break down, but it just doesn't break down until you pull in your driveway. You know, cool. and things like that. You know, stuff happens. Certainly we're in a 3D life right now, but we can bring that 5D vibration and embody it so that as we become more multidimensional, we actually gain the ability to understand that language. It's kind of like the child who is raised in a bilingual family. They learn words in both languages. And even if there's one language that's primarily spoken, they gradually learn the second language. And that's what we're doing. We're gradually learning how to be 5D. Way cool. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of knew because it started bleeding through so much. Exactly. And see, that's the thing. Initially, like I said before about you thinking about my stuff's going in a higher dimension. Monkeys in space. No, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if this is the same thing, but I found my things by saying, okay, I'm in search mode and I need to be in find mode. <laughs> and then well, I what would... you're doing is you're claiming that you could be in that other vibration. And it doesn't sound like that's a stressed statement. It sounds like you're calmly owning that you can find it. Yes. Yeah. Because I always thought, wow, every time I say to myself, I have to get in find mode and not search mode, I find it. <laughs> exactly. Because search mode is anxious. Find mm -hmm. mode is peaceful. Oh, look, I found it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very cool see you you got it down yeah that's a, that's a great tool right there oh it is it's fabulous okay wow what what are some of the other words um well a lot of times people say better and i say instead of saying better say well that's interesting that's fascinating um uh you know and people talk about timing you know this is bad timing this is right timing and I would say, just change it out to divine timing. And that way it's, it's aligned with what we need in the moment rather than saying, well, that's perfect timing because it also implies imperfect timing. And I think divine timing stands alone, you know? Yeah. Okay. A lot of people use the word strange. And I recommend that you change that out to curious or fascinating or interesting or complex or wonderful because strange has a tone to it, a pejorative tone that implies it's bad, like the word weird. You know, people use the word weird all the time. Well, that's weird. And even the way you say it, that's weird. It has yeah. that, you know, that, that put down Judgmental kind of thing. little tone exactly. to it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And we're, we're accustomed to saying it that way. That's how everyone says it. So just eliminate that word. And, you know, instead, uh, I think that's very interesting or that's really unusual. It shows an element of surprise and wonder when you say it that way. So mm. it gives that opening. Um, I also encourage people to use the word juicy or noteworthy. Again, these are words that don't have those take it down notions. Um, and I never use the word lessons. I always call them opportunities. Opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Lessons are good. That's a good word though, isn't it? Well, you know... <clears throat> Because all of us have been through uh, mandatory schooling, mm. we tend to think of lessons as requirement that could be punitive. Ah. Yeah. So okay. that's why I like to say everything's an opportunity, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to discover. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like yeah. that too. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Um, Another thing I tell people is, you know, everybody does have wounds, but tell your he done me wrong story three times and then you're done. And that's kind of interesting because one time when I was upset about something that had happened and I had told the story twice and then I got a call from a lady I didn't know very well and she said, well, you know, how are you doing? What's going on? And I remember thinking, I am not telling her why I'm really pissed. 
I don't want to waste my third time on exactly. somebody I don't know very long. <laughs> exactly. I'm waiting for my sister. She'll give me all the nurturing I need. Right on. You totally rock. That's exactly what I thought. But it's cool because then you force yourself to limit. And at the same time, you're giving yourself permission because I think that we all need to express our emotions, both good and bad. We need to express our emotions, whether they're painful, sorrowful, or uplifting, but we don't need to stay there. Yes. Okay. I like that. Wow. And where can we get the book? The book is available everywhere in bookstores. Barnes & Noble has it. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Um, I have it on my website. It's also available on Kindle. And so also are all my other books available on Kindle and Amazon. So. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to seeing those. And um, thank you for being on the show. What a treat. You rock, mama. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Take care.